Good evening, everyone. Thank you all very much for joining. We appreciate you all um, joining. Um, I know uh, everyone has a lot going on this time of the year, but again, we are very appreciative that we have a number of people that have joined um, and are going to participate this evening. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, this is the Rough Hat Clark County Solar Project Public Information Forum. My name is Ken DiPolio and I'm the consultant for the BLM and I'll be facilitating the meeting tonight. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'll start by going over our agenda tonight and the meeting format. This meeting will run from 6 to 8 p.m. You'll see the agenda on the screen, so let's go through each step. First, the BLM field manager will provide an introduction to the meeting. Next, we'll have a presentation about the project and the BLM process. We will then have a question and answer section, which I'll explain in a few slides. Following the question and answers, we will have a public input section. Finally, we'll close out the meeting. I'll go ahead and turn it over to the BLM field manager. Hey, thank you, Kenda, and good evening, everyone. My name is Shauna Duman, and I'm the field manager for the BLM Las Vegas field office. I want to start off by thanking everyone again for joining us with this meeting tonight. We are presenting on the Rough Hat Clark County Solar Project and providing information on where we are in the process and how you can provide input. Your input will help BLM analyze the appropriateness of a solar project in this location. Whitney Worthlin is the BLM project manager and will be providing the presentation shortly. You have also heard from Kenda Polio, who is the principal for KP Environmental, and she will be moderating both the Q&A session and the public input session. On this slide, you will also see the BLM specialists working behind the scenes to provide answers to the questions you put in the Q&A feature. Kenda will go over that later in the presentation. And with that, I will turn it back to Kenda. Thank you. Tonight's meeting, we will provide opportunities to ask questions and provide public input. Let's start with a question and answer portion. Written questions can be submitted throughout the meeting as you think of them. You can submit questions in writing through the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Please submit only one question at a time in the Q&A function so we can ensure that we get to all questions and we respond to each individual question. We will be responding in writing to the Q&A and we will also be providing verbal live answers as well during that section of the meeting. After the Q&A portion, we'll move into the verbal public input section. We're gonna take verbal input in the order as people pre-registered and said yes or maybe to wanting to provide public comments. Then we'll move on to anyone that may want to provide input that did not identify they wanted to provide comments when they registered. We will not be responding to any comments or questions during this public input section. So be sure to put your questions in writing either before the public input section or again, you can still put them in writing during the public input section but they will just be responded to in writing during this portion of the meeting. If you want to provide input or questions after the meeting, please see the email below and the mailing address below. And these are also on the BLM website that is posted in the chat room feature at the bottom of your screen. Remember that public comment closes on December 22nd, 2021. Okay, now that we've got the housekeeping items out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with the presentation. I'll turn it over to Whitney now. Thank you, Kenda. Good evening, everyone. On the screen, you will see a map of the proposed solar projects within the Pahrump Valley the BLM is currently processing in relation to the town of Pahrump, city of Las Vegas, and the Nevada, California state line. The Rough Hat Clark County Solar Project, highlighted on the map in purple striping, is the project we'll be discussing tonight. Two other projects, 
the Copper Rays Solar Project in blue and the Rough Hat Nye County Solar Project in red will have individual public information forums. The information for the Copper Rays Project meetings will be posted in the chat. Also on the screen, you will see the location of the approved Yellow Pine Solar Project shown in yellow, which was authorized with a record of decision in the fall of 2020. Candela Renewables has submitted a right-of-way application for the Rough Hat Clark County Solar Project. The right-of-way request is to utilize public land in Clark County for the construction, operation, and eventual decommissioning of a proposed solar facility and interconnection to the regional transmission system. The proposed project is a 400 megawatt photovoltaic solar facility with battery storage located on approximately 2,400 acres of BLM administered lands southeast of the town of Pahrump and 38 miles west of Las Vegas. The map on the screen shows the proposed solar facility as the red triangle bordering the Clark Nye County line. The proposed generation tie line runs southeast of the project parallel with State Route 160 to the Trout Canyon substation shown as a yellow box on the bottom right of the map. The Trout Canyon substation was approved with the Yellow Pine project and is in the process of obtaining permits for construction. This map shows the location of the proposed Rough Hat Clark County Solar Project in relation to the local roads and streets within the Pahrump area, including Tacopa Springs Road, Brown Springs Road, and Hafen Ranch Road. The photovoltaic modules installed on site would convert sunlight to the direct current electricity, which is then collected and converted into alternating current electricity through a system of inverters. The on-site transformers would step up the alternating current electricity and deliver it to a proposed on-site substation. Once the electricity reaches the on-site substation, it is delivered off-site to the BLM approved Trout Canyon substation or the point of interconnections via new generation tie lines. In addition, battery storage facilities will be constructed on site. The preliminary plan of development for the proposed project is available online at the project website, which we will provide a link for in the chat. The flowchart on the screen shows the application evaluation process, which begins with the submittal of a solar project application. The application is then prioritized based on the regulations and involves interdisciplinary team review. This helps the BLM prioritize and process the solar application workload more efficiently. After prioritization, the application is determined to be high priorities move into the solar application evaluation process. This includes the variance process, which we will discuss in more detail later. The application evaluation and the variance process involves public information forums and agency coordination. When the evaluation is complete, the BLM will determine whether to continue to process the application. If the BLM determines to continue processing, that is when the NEPA process, including analysis and public involvement, would initiate. These public forums for the Rough Hat Clark County project are part of the early stages of the solar application evaluation process. The BLM Southern Nevada District developed a prioritization process for solar project applications that focuses prioritizing applications with the fewest known resource conflicts for continued processing. The Southern Nevada District utilized this process to prioritize the 26 existing pending applications and continues to use it as more applications are filed. In August 2020, the Rough Hat Clark County Solar Project was determined to be a high priority project due to low resource conflicts. In 2012, the BLM and Department of Energy issued the final programmatic environmental impact statement for the solar energy development in six southwestern states. This document provided information to approve efficiency and creative processes to standardize the review of solar applications in a more environmentally responsible manner. The solar PEIS designated solar energy zones that are suited for utility scale production of solar energy. Outside of the established solar energy zones are variance areas. 
Applications within variance areas are available on a case-by-case -case basis based on environmental consideration and coordination with federal, state, and local government agencies, tribes, and public input. Solar development in the variance area is subject to the BLM's variance process, which is separate from and comes before the NEPA process. The Rough Hat Clark County Solar Project is located in a variance area and is subject to the variance process. The variance process is part of the application evaluation process described in the BLM right-of-way regulations. The variance process focuses on collection and evaluation of resource data with input from the public, tribes, and federal, state, and local governments. This input and evaluation of data helps BLM to assess the appropriateness of the solar proposal. Tonight's public information forum and the public input period that lasts until December 22nd provides you an opportunity to have input on the Rough Hat Clark County Solar Project. The information gathered during the meeting and the input period will inform the application evaluation and variance process and assist BLM in making a determination on whether to continue to process the application and begin NEPA. Currently, we're still in the early stages of processing the Rough Hat Clark County Solar Project application. After the public information forums have concluded, we'll continue to gather public input on the project until December 22nd, 2021. The information we gather will be presented to the BLM State Director, who will, with concurrence from the BLM Director, make the determination on whether the project would move forward to the NEPA process. The determination on this project is anticipated in early 2022. Helpful input and information from you would include potential local concerns, opportunities, and barriers related to the proposed project. We would also appreciate input from the about the types of use within the proposed project area or resource concerns. Some examples could include types of recreational activities and opportunities that are conducted within the project area, resource concerns for wildlife, vegetation, visual resources, and any other local factors. For projects subject to the variance process, like the Rough Hat Clark County Solar Project, the BLM will also consider the variance factors described in the Solar PEIS. Any input you may have related to the variance factors would also be helpful at this time. A detailed list of the variance factors can be found at the link on the slide. We will also provide this link in the chat. At this time, I'm going to turn the meeting back over to Kenda, who will begin the question and answer session. Thank you, Whitney. Okay, so as Whitney mentioned, we will move on to the question and answer portion. Um, we have not seen many questions come in, but um, I'll go ahead and explain it and hope that if you have questions, you can go ahead and use uh, the function and I'll go ahead and start this explanation and hopefully we see some questions come in. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, we'll use the Q&A function, and that is at the bottom of your screen. Please click the Q&A, and you can type your question and submit your question by hitting send. Whitney will come on and provide a verbal response, or we will be providing responses in writing. So you'll be seeing those in that Q&A function. Please remember to submit only one question at a time. So one question and then put send. Again, that is so we can ensure that we are responding to each question. You can submit as many questions as you would like. Remember, once we move on to the public comment portion, we will not be answering these verbally, but only in writing. Okay, as we are seeing, there are some questions that are coming in. I know we did get one person that asked uh, to be a speaker, so we will add that person um, to the end of the public comment speakers list. We have, I think, about 14 people that pre-registered for that. So um, we will be doing that. I do see that as one question um, that came in. So I wanted to mention that. I'm gonna give everyone a minute to um, provide some questions. 
Uh, so if you can hold on for a couple minutes, we will be getting to some of those um, now. So please go ahead and keep typing in your questions. Okay, so we do see some questions coming in. Um, again, we're just trying to um, get organized here. Um, just wanted to make sure that I let everyone know that um, we are getting ready. So just give us one more minute. Thank you. Okay, um, again, we're going to go ahead and get started with some uh, questions. We are providing answers in writing, so please check the Q&A portion. We'll be providing some in writing and going ahead and answering some live. Okay, the first one, Whitney, um, variance factors, what does this curtail? Sure. Uh, the variance factors were included under the solar programmatic EIS. Um, there are a list of various factors that would require documentation um, that we would be working through. Um, so public input would uh, feed into that as well as agency coordination. Um, some of the, the documentation requirements include looking at the land status of the area, um, applicable opportunities uh, for to, to document for the um, cultural resources. It's a list of kind of different factors to look at when we review um, the application through the variance process. Thank you, Whitney. Okay, so again, we're um, coming up on some more questions. So again, please keep checking your uh, Q&A and in the chat, and we will be getting to the next question here in a minute. Okay, Whitney, we've got another question. Again, sorry, everyone, we're, we're moving slow, but we have a lot of time. So we will be respectful of your time. Um, but again, we want to make sure that um, we are, some of them are being answered in writing, as I mentioned, and some live. So we want to make sure we're getting to everything and we're um, being diligent. So we do appreciate your time. Okay, um, Whitney, 
Has BLM established a national trail management corridor for the old Spanish National Historic Trail consistent with BLM policy manual 6280. The BLM currently has an interim five mile corridor around the trail. Uh, this has not been designated yet to date, but it is interim. Okay, thank you, Whitney. We're seeing a couple other questions coming in, not many. I know that we're getting to a lot of them um, via writing. So again, um, just want to give everyone the opportunity, if you do have additional questions that you would like to put in to the Q&A chat, please do so. I'm gonna give it another couple minutes to see if anyone else has additional questions. Um, we'll take another couple minutes and then we would move into the public comment portion. Again, remember we can keep taking questions uh, via the chat um, throughout the, re the remaining part of the, um, the meeting. So again, we'll go ahead and um, Give me one more minute and we will, I'll be right back. Again, thank you all. Okay, uh, Whitney, we have another question that came in. If you don't mind, let me get you this one. So a question came in about why this area? Um, it's very close to the town and why was this area specifically selected? Uh, the applicant, Candela Renewables, identified and applied for the proposed project site. Um, the lands being requested in the application are identified in the solar PEIS's variance lands, uh, where solar energy development applications would be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, the BLM is currently considered the appropriateness of this application, utilizing the variance process that we discussed earlier in the presentation. Um, these current public input meetings and the public input period are a critical piece to this variance process. Thank you, Whitney. Okay, we're coming up on uh, 6.30. There's some more questions coming in. So we'll get organized um, and look at those and then we will um, go ahead and, and move on. But give us another couple minutes. Um, I'll be back in just one minute as we try to um, get the rest of the questions ready. Okay, we have another question um, that came in. Whitney, um, can you clarify if that means five miles? And I'm not sure why, I apologize. The question moved from my screen. So I am getting it right now. Okay, can you clarify if that means five miles from the OSH, sorry, OSNHT center line? or 2.5 miles from the center line? Yes, thank you. We can provide clarity. Uh, it's five miles from the center line. Okay, great. Thank you. So we see some more questions coming in. So give us a couple more minutes and I'll be right back.
Okay, um, Whitney, will you amend the RMP for this? Gemini Solar was also a VRM class three and got a full plan amendment with a 90 day comment period. Can you answer that question? Yes, I can. Uh, so land use plan conformance uh, review is part of the variance process. And so we are looking into that um, specific to the VRM class three as well. So yes, uh, documentation of that conformance is part of this process. And then we would, if we, a plan amendment was needed, we would move forward with that. But we are still um, reviewing our plans and our conformance. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll also, while we are gathering any additional questions, remind everyone that on the BLM website, there is, uh, and the BLM website is at the bottom of your screen. Um, they have information, as I mentioned earlier, about being able to um, provide comments via email. So if you didn't get uh, your comment or question answered in the meeting, you can do that via email. And again, that uh, email address is in the chat. Uh, I'm sorry, on the BLM website. Um, we also have a mailing address. If you have a comment letter or something that you would like to provide in writing, we're able to do that as well. Um, for any technical difficulties, I think um, we also have in the chat, um, but it seems like everyone, uh, we've, we've got a, a good uh, technology knock on wood. I shouldn't have said that because you know how everything goes, but um, uh, we also have in the chat a couple links for you that have been mentioned throughout this evening, um, links to uh, this project, uh, links to uh, uh, another project that was mentioned earlier in the uh, meeting, um, links to the various variance process. So again, if you go into the chat function that is close to the raise their, your hand function, you'll be able to see um, that feature. Okay, uh, Whitney, we have another question. Um, who bears responsibility for the security of the project? True. Uh, security of the project would fall to the applicant. However, we are still very early in this process, and so we do not have full details to that. Okay, thank you very much. We're getting a, a few more in that I know that some of them are being responded to in writing. So just give us a couple more minutes, make sure that anyone else um, that is on, if you think of a question, you can go ahead and put that in uh, the Q&A feature. As I mentioned, we will be moving on to the public comment portion here soon. Um, as I mentioned previously, the public comment portion is going to rely or, or go in the order of how people pre-registered. But again, please feel free. Um, we've added one person that has to be added, but as we, um, as we go, we will be able to, you'll be able to use the raise the hand feature. Um, I'll go ahead and, and mention this as we're um, still in the public comment portion, that there is, there is a two minute time frame that we're gonna ask you to adhere to during the public comment session. Um, however, with the amount of time that we have, um, I think that um, if you have uh, multiple comments, we'll, we'll wanna get through everyone, but if you have additional comments, we will absolutely um, allow people to raise their hand and go ahead and provide additional comments. So I just did want to mention that, that we do have, um, you know, we still have a lot of time. Um, and again, we are cognizant of that time. So um, give us a, a couple more minutes. I want to keep the, the Q&A open just in case, and then we'll go ahead and move on.
Okay, again, a um, couple more minutes. See if anything we, I haven't seen many come in, but again, we are so early in the meeting. I, I wanna make sure that everyone um, has time to provide their questions. Okay, we are getting some additional questions coming in. So again, apologize for the um, for the silence. Um, I know in my life, I kind of appreciate silence, but I know everyone has a busy evening. So um, we are trying to get through and make sure that we leave time for everyone to ask questions. I'll also mention that we will be um, uh, posting uh, this presentation online. And so you'll be able to um, get that information also on the BLM website. Okay, hey, Whitney, we have another uh, question that's come in. Um, why not disperse smaller projects instead of concentrating these larger projects? BLM is responding to the applicant's proposals. And so they generate the proposal and then we have the responsibility to uh, respond to those. Um, so the, yeah, it's kind of similar to the uh, question answered a little bit earlier. Okay, thank you, Whitney. Okay, a couple more minutes. See if we have any more questions coming in. I think we're slowing down on questions right now. Let me check, I will be right back and we will go ahead and take last call for questions coming in. Again, we keep this open. We're gonna keep the, the meeting does stay open until eight o'clock. 
Um, again, I, based on kind of where we are and the number of people we have that um, have registered and are attending, um, we should be able to have time. So the meeting will go till eight o'clock or we'll keep, the, keep it live. We will close out to kind of be respectful of everyone that's on. But then um, if you think of something, you can uh, come back in and join and we would be able to um, answer that question or you can provide comments. Okay, Whitney. Um, Whitney, where will the energy go and who will it be sold to? Uh, the project sponsor, Candela Renewables, has indicated that a purchaser for the power proposed to be generated from the project site has not yet been identified. Um, the point of interconnection will be at the Trout Canyon substation, which, which means that energy would flow into the California Independent System Operation Grid which manages portions of the grid, including Valley Electric service. Okay, thank you, Whitney. Um, I think we're gonna, I think we're getting, we're seeing um, kind of questions that have come in and we're answering those. So I think we can go ahead, take a last call for questions, but we'll go ahead and uh, move on. Let's see, I do wanna remind everyone that um, participants can see the question and answers in the Q&A feature. So you have to click on show all, um, and that, that way you can see the question in, in order of how they've been answered. So I do wanna mention that we've seen some people that have asked that, um, you know, how we are responding to the ones in writing and, and it may look small or they may not see them. So I just wanna make sure that everyone is aware of that feature. Um, so again, you can look at hit show all and you would be able to see all the questions um, that have been um, asked and answered in writing. And then obviously you're aware of the ones that we have, we have talked through. Okay, with that, I think we can um, move on again, um, just so everyone is aware. We have um, plenty of time left. You can continue to type in your questions and we will be providing those uh, questions in that uh, Q&A feature. So at this point, um, I think we can move on. So we will go ahead and go to our next slide. I don't see any other questions coming in. I'm trying to talk slow just to see if there's anything else coming, but um, I think we are ready. So um, some of this I've gone over, of course, uh, based on um, us being, you know, having some time while we were doing uh, the question and answer, but I'll go ahead and go over it um, again. So as we mentioned, input, uh, public input is gonna be accepted in order of registration online. Um, what we will do is call your name and on the next slide, you will see names listed in order of as they registered. We will ask that you use the raise hand feature um, and that is at the bottom of the screen and the facilitator will open your microphone. Um, if you're on your phone, you can use the raise hand star nine, then unmute and then mute is star six. I did mention that there is a two minute timer that will be displayed on the screen to show the remaining time. Um, again, uh, you can come back and provide additional comments, but we will ask that we you keep your comments uh, to two minutes just in case, um, and, and we do want to get to everyone. I've mentioned several times that we also um, will be continuing to answer questions in that Q&A feature in writing. Um, we really want to emphasize that your um, Input is valuable and all of the comments and the questions will all be part of the public record. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. Okay, out of respect for everyone, a couple of guidelines that we wanna go over. Um, one, stay within your allotted time so everyone can speak. Um, we've mentioned this, so I think everyone understands. You can see the timer right there on the screen. 
Uh, please be respectful to others. We do ask that you refrain from profanity. Um, we do value everyone's comments. However, if the guidelines aren't followed, we will have to mute your microphone and move on to the next person. So that's not something we wanna do. Um, but again, we do ask that you respect these guidelines. Um, let's go ahead and get started with this public um, input section. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and again, call out the first name. We'll ask that you raise hand, use that raise hand feature, and then our moderator, uh, facilitator, apologize, will go ahead and unmute. Okay. The first person is, and I apologize in advance for um, how I pronounce names, Rachel, I can get. So it is Rachel Pentarelli. Rachel, can you use the raise the hand feature and let us know if you're on? Okay, we do not see Rachel in the list of attendees. We're gonna go ahead and search for her and we've not seen someone raise their hand with Rachel's name. Rachel, if you are on and on another, we do have a couple phone numbers. Um, if you are on with a phone, again, you can use the star nine to unmute, unmute yourself. So that will, sorry, star nine will un, uh, raise the hand. So we are not seeing, there's someone, Okay, let's go on to the next person. Again, Rachel, we do have plenty of time in the meeting. So if we need to, we can come back um, and let you provide comments. Again, we wanna get to everyone that we can. Um, the next person is John Black. I do see John on. Okay, John, we're gonna unmute. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for the meeting and the opportunity to comment tonight. Um, I just wanted to note, uh, as has already been noted by the previous presenter at the beginning, that this project has been allowed as a variance project. So it's basically an exception to the landscape level planning process that the BLM did for the, for the solar programmatic EIS. Um, so Audubon's main concern, um, as always, is for the loss of habitat. Um, that could result from this project, but we're also concerned about the precedent set by this project approval. Um, and I just wanted to note that because of this variance situation, the bar for review and detail should be very high in this project and that all concerns should be addressed. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. I appreciate your comment. Um, we're gonna go ahead and reset uh, the timer. Um, I do want to mention um, there are more than one page. So this is just the first 10 people that registered. We do have another slide. So there are additional people that are on the second page. So please uh, bear with us as we go through everyone and allow everyone to speak. Um, we will get to everyone. And again, we will open it up. If you have not spoken, you don't see your name on the list. We have plenty of time and we will get to you by using the raise the hand feature. Okay. Number three is Paul Ostapuk. And Paul, I think I saw you. I'm sorry. Okay, I think we see a note that Paul does not wanna speak. So Paul, if you change your mind, please um, you can uh, use the raise the hand feature and we'll see when you do that. Okay, but thank you, Paul. Um, the next person is Erica Gerling. Erica, are you on? We're looking right now to see if we see you. I didn't see your name. Give us one minute. Wanna make sure. Okay, we do not see Erica on. Okay, again, Erica, if you're on, please, you can raise your hand feature and we can always backtrack and we will pick you up. So again, we wanna make sure everyone gets an opportunity. Okay, the fifth person is Rich Johnston. Rich, if you can use the raise the hand feature. Okay, Rich, we do not see you as well. So we are moving faster. <laughs> okay, um, number six, Joyce Barishman. 
Joyce, are you on? Joyce, I think we're unmuting you now. Joyce, we have unmuted you. I think you may have to unmute, um, hit your mic button at the bottom. We see your hand. Joyce, are you able to see the mute, the microphone button in the far left-hand corner of your screen? If you are, you can um, hit that button and you should be able to. We've um, provided unmute for you. So Joyce, I'm gonna go ahead and we'll go ahead and um, go to the next person, but we will come back. I'm making a note, Joyce, you will be the first person to come back. If you can try, um, we're gonna keep, I think we're okay. Okay, we're gonna, Joyce, we'll go ahead and make sure that we circle back. So give us one minute. Okay, the seventh person is David Perlman. I think I saw David, I think I saw you. There you are on the list. I see your hand raised. Okay, David. Hi, thank you again for, uh, for, for sponsoring this, uh, this forum. And I would just like to say, I'm absolutely opposed to this. It's. Uh, it's just an eyesore. It's, it's going to be an eyesore during the construction phase. It's going to be destruction of, of, of our beautiful desert. But my main concern is that um, during their presentation uh, to the Nye County Commission, or, or maybe it was the, um, the Public Land Advisory Committee here in Nye County, they mentioned that they're going to use 800 acre feet of water. Um, while the desert is the perfect place, I'm sure, for solar, it's also a place where there's not a lot of water. We'll put that in perspective, we're talking about 260 million gallons of water just to build this thing. And then they say they're going to use 5 to 20 acre foot annually. So that's a 40% a variance. Let's just say they make a 40% variance um, uh, underestimate in their 800 acre feet that they're going to use in the beginning. We don't have that kind of water. I mean, in my end of town, which is kind of close to where they're building it, we've already had people that are digging their wells deeper and still not hitting water. So my comments are I'm absolutely opposed. And the individuals who have spoken already, I support what they've said. And I, again, thank you for this opportunity to speak. Thank you for your comment. I appreciate everyone again um, being respectful of the timer. Uh, so again, thank you for your comments and being respectful of, of the timer. Um, I do wanna remind everyone, um, again, I know questions are coming in um, and you should be able to see all the question and answers um, in the chat. You should be able to see the email. Wanna remind everyone again, the deadline for comments is later this month, December 22nd. So I uh, wanna make sure everyone understands that we have plenty of, you do have plenty of time to comment after this meeting and after you've been able to, um, to hear the comments and hear the questions. I think Joyce, um, I think that you have unmuted. Joyce, are you on? And would you like to start your comment? Ye yes, I would. Can you Great. hear me? Thank you, Joyce. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay. Well. During the meeting on the 30th that we had in Pahrump, um, they spoke about we would lose property value. And it was said that there would be a 5% loss in our property values around the project in Pahrump. So who's going to pay for that? Where does that money come from? And, they, and I'm sure that it will be more than 5%. And what about the the school, what about the elementary school being so close to children? How can that be allowed? That would be my public input at this point. Thank you, Joyce. Um, I'm glad that you were able to join, provide comment, and um, I saw that you, you were able to, to get back on. So I do appreciate 
um, you getting back on and providing that comment. So thank you very much. Well, where's the answers? Um, so we are, again, um, as we mentioned, we are providing um, question and answers via the Q&A chat at the bottom of your screen. So we will try to answer those questions. So please, if you do have a question that you feel like you have not, has not been answered, either verbally or in that question and answer section, please go ahead and write that in there and we will provide that in writing. Uh, as I mentioned, and again, you know, I, it's just kind of the guidelines that we're going by. Um, during this portion, we are not responding to questions, we're just taking public comments. So um, again, feel free to put those questions in that Q&A chat. Okay, um, we'll move on. Uh, the next person is Simone Griffin. Simone, we're looking to see if we see Simone Griffin. If you can raise your hand. Okay, I, we do not see Simone. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next one. Again, if Simone, if you are on and you raise your hand, we can always go back. Next one is Judy Bronfman. Judy, are you on if you can raise your hand? Hi. Hi, Judy. Um, you know, I'm calling from Los Angeles. So thanks for the opportunity for letting us Angelinos and others, you know, across the country who care about the desert, you know, um, speak. I, you know, as a past urban planner, I don't understand how the BLM sees this as good stewardship. Um, it really appears there isn't any real planning. You aren't looking at the big picture of needs, you know, across the whole region. Um, but just seemingly responding to application by application from, you know, in, from corporations who don't have the desert or the community or even the region's interest at heart. Um, it's not responsible stewardship. Um, so real planning might include things like looking at the locations that might receive the energy from these projects and seeing if those cities and other entities are actually doing the maximum to do their part in greening, you know, with rooftop um, solar and parking lot coverage everywhere. I can tell you in Los Angeles that is not happening. So it seems problematic that the BLM is willing to sacrifice, you know, our carbon sequestering public lands when cities and manufacturers aren't doing what they should be doing locally to attack the problem. I'm just really stunned. Um, it's it's your 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 goal should be good stewardship not responding to corporations interests um so why not do a legitimate planning process you know where everyone who's involved actually looks at the big picture and comes up with a plan um i'm afraid in a few years it'll be clear that greed and not green was driving these projects um and i wanted to say something about these answering questions and writing when you're on a phone and you um, can't read those teeny words and nobody can hear benefit from other people's questions, it's really not a public process. It's just very sort of difficult to navigate and it's not accessible. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I appreciate your public comment. Um, and again, you can use the Q&A uh, feature, but thank you again for your public comment and um, coming on. Okay, the next uh, person we have is Kathy. And Kathy, I am, uh, I'm gonna go Kathy Yu. I apologize for not being able to say your last name. I do think I saw you on the, I think I saw her, but I don't see her anymore. Kathy, are you still on? If you can use the raise the hand feature. Okay, we do see a comment from her that she will email in her comment. So I think Kathy had to go. So let's move on to the next group, um, Megan, if we can. Okay. Let's see, the next person is Kevin Emmerich. Kevin, are you on if you can use the raise the hand feature? Okay, I think we see Kevin. Kevin, are you there? 
Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll make this comment. I'll try to say it in this time frame. Um, when you issued the high pr priority status, um, you did so um, using local considerations, and you said there are low conflicts. A lot of that was based on your desert tortoise surveys. And when you made that determination in August 2020, um, you're going by surveys that occurred 31 years ago. Um, the company did actually come in and do surveys in May of 2021, but that, as you know, is a record-breaking drought year. Um, they said they did it with a confidence interval of 95%, but an agency biologist told me it was 64%, and that sounds very accurate in drought condition. Yellow pine solar, um, when they cleared the tortoises out, um, they got 139 and predicted 53. Um, they said at the time it was 3.04 per square mile, the same that they're saying for rough Pat Clark. But after they cleared those tortoises out and got a lot more than they said, they said 11 per square mile on the yellow pine site. So how could the rough Pat Clark site be only 3.04 per square mile? That is an underestimate and you need to order them to do a new survey. You really need to do that because the rough Pat Clark site is even higher than yellow pine. It has Joshua trees on the site and it actually could be um, even more abundant in numbers of desert tortoise. The fact that Candela just wants to get this done quick and wants to do their surveys in a drought year is frivolous and it's unprofessional to allow that. Do another survey, make them do another. Thank you. Thank you for your comment and also um, respecting the time frame. So we appreciate that. Um, again, I will um, remind everyone that we can uh, probably loop back. And if people have additional comments, go ahead and open it up uh, for those additional comments. So um, again, I do appreciate everyone sticking to the time and watching that timer. So thank you. Okay, the next um, person is Michael Fender. Uh, Mr. Fender, um, if you are on, if you can raise your hand, we do see you. Okay, Mr. Fender, you should be unmuted. That do it? That did it. Go right ahead. It. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, I, I'm not a totally opposed to solar, but what I'm opposed to is the location of these solar projects. Uh, I honestly believe that these, the proximity of these, these projects in these residential areas are not really helpful, number one. Uh, and I believe there will be a loss of property value if all of these projects were to happen, not just this one, because I understand there's at least five proposed for this area and exceeding 18,000 acres. And if so doing, that's a lot more water than 800 square, excuse me, 800 acre feet of water per system. That's a lot of water that'd be utilized during the construction phase. Um, so if these five projects or solar farms are to happen, this would make the south end of our Perón Valley literally a commercial reflective wasteland, in my opinion. I would highly recommend that other places or pieces of property within the BLM regime be utilized so that are not as in close proximity to this semi-residential area known as Perón Valley. Well, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. That's all I have. Thank you very much. We appreciate um, that you've um, come on and, and spoken and again, been cognizant of time. Okay, um, the next person is Carolyn Rogue. Logue, sorry. I'm sorry, I missed one. I apologize. Um, Kenneth Neitz. And again, I apologize if, uh, again, if I um, mispronounce that name, we're looking to make sure that um, Kenneth is not on. We do, we do not see him. So Caroline or Carolyn, I think you're on. 
you would be up next and we're gonna go ahead and unmute you. So it looks like Carolyn that you may not be able to speak um, based on an older version of Zoom, it's popping up. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and try to troubleshoot that for you. But if you could um, give us a minute and I will loop back over to you. Okay, we're gonna move on. Um, it looks like Robin um, has identified that he does he or she does not wanna speak. Um, so we're gonna move on to Riley Young. Riley Young, if you could use the raise the hand feature. Okay, I don't think we see Riley. Riley, again, um, raise your hand and we can always go back to you. Okay, Edward LeBlanc. Let's see, we see him, okay. We're gonna unmute you. Are you able to speak? Can you hear me okay? We can, thank you very much. Great. Uh, I just wanted to uh, piggyback on uh, Judy and uh, Michael about the proximity of the uh, this project that's right up against uh, near Kellogg and uh, Heffen Ranch. Uh, for the life of me, I don't understand who in their right mind would put something like that right in a community. And then also the panels, the farm surrounds two ranches that are in the middle of this and uh, they have to uh, drive all the way around. I was just totally aghast when I heard that at the meeting. And uh, there's plenty of land between here to the other side of uh, Tacopa that could be, these things could be uh, stuck in instead of uh, putting it right in the middle of our place. And uh, I, I'm, di I'm just appalled in, in the uh, why somebody is doing this to us. So, uh, uh, that and my other concern is is uh, our well system. You know, we are in wells here, and uh, my question is is that when I run out of water, who's going to pay to have my well dug deeper? Um, man, that that could be a class action suit that we could all rise up and uh, and and uh, do something about it to this corporation that's trying to uh, move in on our property here. That's all I got to say. Thanks for your uh, your time. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, the next person is um, Shannon Salter. Shannon, we're looking to see if you're on the list. Shannon, if you could raise your hand. Okay, we do not see Shannon Salter. If you are on the phone, again, Ms. Um, Salter, you can raise your hand with star nine. I just want to remind everyone, if you're on the phone, we do have a couple phone numbers. So star nine does allow that raise the hand feature. Okay, Hillary Angelo. Let's see, we're looking. Hillary. Okay, we do not see Hillary Angelo. Um, Tina Bond Colglin. Um, Tina, I know that um, I think you had identified in the um, chat or the Q&A that you would like to speak. So go ahead and raise your hand. I think you should be able to speak now. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I know fighting our government, trying to get them to stop these projects is like pulling teeth, but there has to be a way that we could put stipulations on these projects. For one, a thousand feet from our houses is not an option. It should be a minimum of at least a mile. Second of all, we should put a stipulation that the employees are all from Pahrump or at least 90% of the employees come from Pahrump. If we have to, if they, it is all about greed and they're gonna spend the money, why can't they get with homeowners and offer to put solar on our houses instead of putting them out in the middle of the desert? It helps the Pahrump residents and then all the extra energy that we would produce can help other cities and states. Isn't there a way or can't we get together 
and, and put stipulations on these projects. I mean, there's six of them just trying to go here alone right now, but I hear there's 18 on the list and there's six other states that they're trying to do this to. So why can't we figure out a way that everyone um, gets something out of this? That's all, thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your comment. Um, we did get a, a, someone mentioned that they're having technical difficulties. So um, I think we have a, a number of other people that haven't mentioned that. So if you are having technical difficulties um, in the chat, there is a person that you can call, Victoria Gaston, um, and her phone number is in the chat, but also go ahead and identify in the Q&A if you are having um, technical difficulties so we can also um, try to troubleshoot that as well. Um, we're gonna go back to, I think it's Caroline, Carolyn. Uh, Carolyn, we are going to um, uh, go ahead and make a change here to, to go ahead and see if it works to let you speak. Um, Carolyn, are you ready and see if we can um, unmute you? You will need to unmute yourself in the far left-hand corner. So click on that mic button and make sure that that red line is not through it. Caroline, can you speak? Are you? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm muted. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Oh, great. Thank you. And I appreciate your assistance in getting my Zoom working. No problem. The, the uh, issue I'd like to address is the ingress and egress of vehicles for construction purposes that will be going uh, uh, down Hafen Ranch Road to the construction site and it passes Hafen School uh, and Hafen Ranch Road is not a heavily traveled road at this time and construction traffic will be very difficult to be handled on this small uh, two lane road that wasn't meant for heavy traffic. It, it's already bearing a lot of traffic for the home construction that's going on on the south end of town. So at the public hearings, it was mentioned that there's a possibility of taking another uh, road, which or building another road is what would be needed. But that road is only on the planning maps and isn't in uh, any use right now because it, do it doesn't um, extend to 160 and that is Kellogg. It only goes from Hafen Ranch then uh, west down Kellogg. And if that road is extended, who's going to extend it and who's going to pay for it and how is it going to be maintained and is it going to be through taxpayer funds again to construct that road? And um, it certainly does seem that going by an elementary school where the children come out at that, that road would be very, very uh, difficult to maintain safety. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate um, you sticking with us and us being able to, um, to get you on as a, as a speaker. Um, I do wanna mention, so that has got, we've gotten through everyone that pre-registered, but we have plenty of time to take additional comments. Um, I'll also remind everyone, as I've done a bunch, we still can take Q and A's in the, in the written uh, Q and A uh, function at the bottom of your screen. Also, if you are having technical difficulties um, on your computer and somehow your Zoom function is not working, you can use the phone number. So in the registration, um, you would have seen a link. There is also a, a long phone number uh, that has a, uh, a passcode. So you should be able to get on using that. Um, if you are having uh, trouble, we can also put that um, in the chat, that phone number in the chat. Again, just trying to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to provide public comment. Um, okay, let's move on and see if we do have any additional people that have not spoken. We'll start with the people that have not spoken. If you have not spoken, but you do wish to comment, 
please raise your hand and we will try to get to you now. Okay, we're not seeing anyone raising their hand. Um, let's go ahead and move on. We had about 20 people. We had 20 people pre-register. I know a number of them weren't there. So maybe 12 to 15 did speak. If any of you that spoke would like to speak again or provide an additional public comment, please raise your hand and we'll go ahead and unmute you and you can provide an additional public comment. Okay, we have um, Joyce. I think you spoke earlier, but I think you raised your hand and you would like to speak again. So we're going ahead and unmuting you and you should be able to talk. Okay, there? I, am, I am here. My husband would like to say a word. Is that allowed? Um, yes, can he provide his name so we can get his name yes, on the record? Yes. Uh, yeah. My name is Mike Barishman, B-A-R-I-S-H-M-A-N. Thank you. Uh, I think this is a, a complete abomination. Uh, I think you really should be ashamed of yourself trying to push this agenda on our little community. This is something that you would not have in your community, uh, right next to an elementary school. All we heard from the last meeting is that, oh, you know, we're only going to suffer a little bit of dust. We're only going to suffer a little bit of the of, uh, ambient heat temperature around. We're only going to suffer mowing down the desert instead of digging it up. Oh, how great. We're only going to suffer maybe about 5% of our property loss. This is <laughs> this is really an abomination. This is nothing but greed. This is an attempt of vampires wanting to suck the lifeblood of the water out of our aquifers. And nothing at all has been offered to us at all, nothing. Uh, $60 million into 30 years going into the tax economy, that's trinkets and beads. You, you think we send our children to school barefoot or something. I'm completely, thoroughly disgusted. You know, that you would not have this in your neighborhood. Everyone who is part of this project doesn't even live here in the state. So, you know, we are fiercely against it. You would not have this in your backyard. You would not have this happening by your children's or grandchildren's schools. And I don't see how you could have any kind of credence in wanting to push this agenda. You should be ashamed of yourself. And that's it. Okay. Okay, um, we're gonna go ahead and see if additional people would like to provide public comment. I'm gonna give a couple more minutes to see if there's anyone else that has um, is raising their hand. Okay, we have um, Ryan Gallagher. Ryan Gallagher. Yep, I'm here, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. All right, greetings all. Um, to, to follow up on what the previous gentleman just said, um, the applicant has in several meetings uh, in the community toted uh, that they're going to provide this, you know, significant fund of tax to the community. Um, and it's my understanding under uh, state law that that's not, there's, there would not be a property tax component of this. And it's, it's just something that I've been concerned about because I've heard them say it several times um, and, and I realize it's nothing to do with the Bureau of Land Management, um, but it just, it concerns me that this has been a, a narrative of uh, what I at least perceive as a, a false promise um, coming from this particular applicant. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you for your comment. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and see if anyone else um, Okay, we're just checking to make sure that anyone else um, will wait another minute or so if anyone else has any further comments. I am not seeing any additional questions come in or uh, public comment. So we're gonna give it a couple more seconds. We'll be moving on and closing out the meeting. Um, that does not mean we will go offline. Um, we do wanna go ahead and uh, be respectful of everyone that has been on and um, joined us for um, over 40 minutes, uh, sorry, an hour and 20 minutes. Um, so we do appreciate you being here um, and appreciate the comments. But let's go ahead and since again, we're not seeing any Q&A, we're not seeing any um, hands raised. So we're gonna go ahead and move on. Okay, um, I, I've mentioned this a couple times, um, and this is how to submit further comment. Um, we have the BLM website. This is also in the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. As we mentioned, the public input period goes up until 12-22-2001. So if you do have additional questions or comments, please go to the website. Um, you can also jot down this email address. Um, you can see that on your screen, as well as a mailing address, if you have a hard copy letter or a comment that you would like to put in writing. We do appreciate everyone's time, um, everyone, everyone that did participate. Uh, so again, I wanna thank you. Um, I know how everyone's time is very valuable. So I just wanna, um, again, thank everyone for joining. We'll go ahead and, um, let our BLM field manager uh, make a statement and then we will close out the meeting. But as I mentioned, we will stay online if you do have something else that you need to ask in the Q&A or if you do wanna provide a public comment, we will be watching for people that rejoin or people come in up until eight o'clock. So with that, um, let's move on to the next slide. Oh, I just noted that maybe I did not say the right year, year correctly. Um, the uh, public comment closes 12-22-2021. Um, I'm sure I'll watch that back and, and see what I said, but I do appreciate the correction. Again, it is it does close 12-22-2021. Okay, Shauna. Hi, I want to uh, say thank you again to everyone who joined us tonight and provided your questions and comments. Uh, these questions and comments will help us make a better decision. And I encourage everyone to submit you anything else that you may have before the comment period ends on December 22nd. You can still see how to submit comments um, on the screen and the meeting, like Kenda said, the meeting will stay open until 8 p.m. and we'll continue to answer questions in the Q&A box. But once again, thank you so much for joining us tonight and I hope everyone has a wonderful evening.